Our Swift UI app is looking good so far. We've got a stack of cards that can be dragged around to control the app, plus some built-in accessibility support. But at the same time, it's also full of glitches that are holding it back. Some big, some small, but all worth addressing. First, it's possible to drag cards around when they aren't even at the top. This is confusing for users because they can grab a card they can't actually see, so it should never be possible. To fix this, we're going to use allows hit testing so that the last card, this one on top here, is the only one that can be dragged around. To do that, we want to try and find our stacked modifier we have right now in content view. It is, duh, duh, duh. here we go, stacked at some position there. And we're gonna add below that another allows hit testing call. We'll say this thing allows hit testing if our index of the card is equal to cards.count minus one. So it's the last card. A small change, one line of code, but hopefully now this one can be dragged. The ones below cannot. Second, our UI is a bit of a mess when used with voiceover. If you launch it on a real device with voiceover enabled, you'll find you can tap on the background image and you'll hear background image read out, which is pointless. However, things get worse. Right now, you're gonna find that small swipes to the, the right and it'll actually read through all the accessibility elements on the screen. It'll read out a text from all our cards, even the ones that aren't visible. To fix the background image problem, we're gonna make this thing a decorative image. So it won't be read out as part of the accessibility layout system. And so we wanna modify our background image, this one here, to say this is an image that is decorative called background as a string like that. To fix the cards, we've got to use an accessibility hidden modifier with a similar condition to our allows hit testing modifier we had a moment ago. In this case, every card that's an index less than the top card should be hidden from the accessibility system. There's really nothing useful it can do with the card. And so we want to try and find our allows hit testing modifier here. That's the one for the individual cards. And we'll say that this card uses accessibility hidden if the index is less than cards.count minus one. So hide all other cards. And there's a third accessibility problem with our app. And it's the direct result of using gestures to control things. And yes, gestures are great fun for using most of the time, but if you have a specific accessibility need, it can be very hard to use them. In this app, our gestures are causing multiple problems. Firstly, it's not apparent to users how they should control the app with voiceover. We don't say the cards are buttons that can be tapped. And when the answer is revealed, there's no audible notification of what it was. Users have no way of swiping left or right through the cards. And this takes very little work to solve these problems, but the payoff is that our app is much more accessible to everyone. First, we're gonna make it clear that our cards are tappable buttons. This is as simple as adding the accessibility add traits modifier with is button to the Z stack in card view. So in card view here, here's our card right now, the whole card here. We're gonna go down, scroll down and find the opacity right here and say this thing is accessibility add traits dot is button like that. And now our system will read things like uh, who played the 13th Doctor in Doctor Who button. An important hint to users, the card can be tapped. Second, we're going to help the system to read the answer to the cards as well as the questions. This is possible right now, but only if the user kind of swipes around on the screen. It's far from obvious. So to fix this, we're going to detect when the user has accessibility enabled on the device. And if they do, we'll automatically toggle between showing the prompt and showing the answer. That is, rather than having the answer appear below the prompt, we'll just switch it out and just show the answer, 
much like a real flashcard would do with a sort of forward and reverse side of the card. And this will cause voiceover to read out the card answer immediately. SwiftUI provides a specific environment property that tells us when voiceover is running called accessibility voiceover enabled. And so in our card view here, we'll start by looking for that exact value. We'll say at environment backslash dot accessibility voiceover enabled. And then just copy and paste that name. So var accessibility voiceover enabled. And right now, our code is playing the prompt and the answer is down here. So we flip between the two in that V stack. We're going to change that. So the prompt and answer are shown in a single text view with accessibility enabled, deciding whether the layout is shown. And so we're going to amend our uh, layout just here a little bit. We'll say first, uh, if we have paste that value there, then we'll show a single text view. Are we showing the answer? If so, card.answer. Otherwise, card.prompt. Either way, a font of large title in a foreground style of black. Otherwise, if we're in the standard device setting mode, we'll go ahead and show the code we had before, the prompt and answer uh, separate in the VStack. Now, if you try that with voiceover, you'll hear it works much, much better. As soon as the card is double tapped or to flip over, the answer is read out. Third, we're going to make it easier for users to mark cards as right or wrong, because currently our images just don't cut it. Not only do they stop users from interacting with our app using tap gestures, but they also get read out as their SF symbols names. You get check mark, circle, image, rather than anything actually useful. To fix this, we gotta replace our images with buttons that actually remove the cards. Now we don't actually have to do anything different if the user was correct or wrong. I need to leave, you know, something for your challenges. But we can at least remove the top card from the deck. At the same time, we're gonna provide a label and a hint so users get a better idea of what the buttons actually do. And so over in our content view, we have this H stack right now. Uh, that has the image, a spacer, and a different image. And we're going to replace this a little bit. I'm going to just uh, monkey around a little bit around this image here. We'll say there's a button, and the action for that is a with animation call that calls remove card at cards.count minus one, so the last card. And the label for that button is that current image system name, X mark circle padding, yada, yada, yada code this stuff here. Like I said, we're going to add a label. So accessibility label will be wrong. And then a hint, accessibility hint, mark your answer as being incorrect. Uh, then the same thing for check mark down here. Boom. Uh, we're going to say uh, button here uh, with the action with animation. Again, remove card at cards.count uh, minus one with a label again of the check mark circle, like so. This time the uh, accessibility label will be just correct. And then accessibility hint will be mark your answer as being correct. So because these buttons remain on screen even when the last card has been removed. We've got to be really careful here. We've got to add an actual guard check at the start of this call to remove card at, to make sure we don't try and remove a card that doesn't exist. And so scroll down and find remove card at, this one here, and add a single new line of code to the start. Let's make sure it's safe. We'll say guard that index is greater or equal to zero, otherwise bailout. Finally, we can make these buttons visible when either differentiate without color is enabled or when voiceover is enabled. This means adding another property to watch that value. So at the top here, we have here differentiate without color. We'll add to that at environment, accessibility, voiceover enabled. Again, let's paste that name in for the variable name like that, boom. 
And we're going to use that in our condition. Down, where are we here? This one. So if we have differential like color, or we have voiceover enabled like that, then show the extra buttons like that. And with these small accessibility changes, our app works much better for everyone. Good job. Before we're done, I want to add one tiny extra change. Right now, if you drag an image a little, then let go, you'll see it something quite strange. So here you can see if I drag it and release it, just jump back to the middle like that. And you can't really tell what's happening. Is it removing it? Is it re-adding it? You don't know what's going on here, okay? It kind of just jumps back. So we say it's offset back to zero. If we attach a spring animation to our card, it'll slide back into the center, which I think is a much more clear indication to our user of what actually happened. To make this happen, we want to add an animation modifier to the end of the Z stack in our card view. So that's down here. Um, we already have this gesture da, 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 on that mission to find that. So here, I'm going to add an animation here and uh, we'll attach this. Uh, the animation uses, you know, defaults fine with a value of offset. That means the drag offset we have right now. And hopefully it'll look better. Let's find out. Boom. And release. Oh, yeah. Boom. So you get a nice sort of animation like that. You can get a slightly stronger one. You go for something like a bouncy, just fractionally more springy. Um, it's down to you what you think looks good. Oh, yeah, that's quite nice. It's a little, a little overshoot. Oh, yeah, really tasty. Much better. 